Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you've been seeing mini quads on YouTube, seeing them everywhere, and watching people have a lot of fun, and you may have decided, hey, I would like to build my own mini quad, but I'm not a rich man. This is the poor man's mini quad build video. And what I'm gonna do is take you through the stages of assembling what is probably the cheapest mini quad you can build that's gonna be any good. Now there are cheaper ones, but basically most of them are crap, they really are. People sell all sorts of things under the racing mini quad banner, and sometimes, you know, they should be shot for the crap they're peddling. So we're gonna try and deal with some, some parts that I've used in the past that I know are reliable. Now they're not the best parts, they're not the best quality motors, not the best quality frame, but they're enough to get you started and they will save you a lot of money when compared to going out and buying a top of the line brand names, all carbon mini quad with fancy, you know, high spec motors and things. Because when you're learning, you don't need all that stuff, you know, yeah. I was lucky enough that I started with a Blackout Mini H and, you know, I still love my Blackout Mini H. But these days when I, people ask me, what should I build to get into the hobby, you know, get into this mini quad race, go just try it out. Because, I mean, although it may happen, I've never seen it happen yet, there may be at some stage someone who tries mini quads and says, oh, I don't like them. So why would they want to spend a fortune? Because you can spend a thousand bucks on a top spec mini quad. So this video is for people who want to spend just a hundred or two hundred dollars to get a mini quad going. Far more affordable, worth trying out to see whether you like it, as everyone who has ever tried it does. Right, so let's take a look at the bits you're going to need. Now, as regular viewers of RC Model Reviews know, I don't do unboxings, but this time I have to because I put all the bits in a box and I'm going to have to show you what you're going to need. So uh, let's start with something pretty basic. You're going to need a flight controller. Now, this is the Naze 32 board from Hobby King. And all the stuff I'm talking about here, I'll put links to places where you can get it in the description of this video. So you don't have to ask, just look at the full description. You'll find links to the stuff where you can go and buy it. Now, uh, some of the things will have multiple uh, places you can buy it from because you know sometimes stuff's out of stock in one place you have to go somewhere else but this is the Naze 32 board from Hobby King and I got the one where you solder in your own connectors because I'm a dab hand at soldering but you may choose to get one that has the pre-soldered connectors on it that's entirely up to you. Now here's your flight controller it's about 25 bucks I think it's not a lot of money. You're going to need a video transmitter if you're going to fly FPV and these little TS5823s seem to work just fine. Early ones some people had problems with lines in the video but I didn't, I had a couple, one was bad, one was good, but now they seem to have sorted out the bugs and these things work just fine. 32 channels, so they work with your fat sharks or with your sky zones or with whatever you happen to have in the way of video goggles on 5.8 gigahertz. Um, I think these are about another 25, 26 dollars or something, so we're not, not spending too much money just yet. Um, you're gonna need a receiver. Um, of course, depends on the radio gear you're using. If you're using FreeSky, then the D4R2 is just the best receiver for mini quads. It's small, it's light, it does CPPM, which means you don't need a whole bunch of wires hanging around. And it has telemetry on board. So if you've got a FreeSky Tyrannus or a, a telemetry enabled FreeSky system, this is the receiver you want. Another $22, $23 or something. So yeah, we're getting up there, not $100, haven't reached $100 yet. Um, you're going to need some motors. And there are so many motors on the market that I really sort of, what can I, you know, what should I recommend? What should people use? You can have 2204s, 1806s, 2300 kV, 2100 kV. The, the, the list and choice is exhausting, but remember this is a budget build. So what I decided was we'll go for the cheap option. And I got these now, and again, you can get these from multiple sources, which is kind of important with this build, because no good me doing a build if you can't find the parts from anywhere. And this is, this is the um, DYS1806 BE, what is it? Oh, it's on the label here, so BE1806 2300 kV motor. Now these are not the best motors in the world, but they're perfectly adequate for this build. And they're very ooh, shiny gold, see that? Woo. Um, things I don't like about them, they only have a two millimeter shaft, which means that you can bend the shafts um, if you have a really bad ding. But you know, when you're starting out flying Nana, you're probably not gonna have too many of those. So there you go, it's a nice compact little motor. It comes with mounting hardware for your props. And it has, I think from, oh, I can't remember actually, I'll have to have a look. But it comes with a lot of different screws for mounting, which is really important because, um, you know, there's nothing worse than having to ferret around and find screws to mount your motor. It comes with a motor for the T-Props, T-Motor Props, or just your regular GM fans and HQ props there. So that's it, all comes in the one box. Um, there you go, that's the motors I've decided to use now. I got this one from Banggood, and they provide, it's about nine bucks, nearly 10 bucks, but that includes free shipping. So. You get four of those, it's going to set you back about 40 bucks. Now Hobby King also sell these, and so if you're buying your Naze 32 board from Hobby King, 
um, you can also throw in those motors there if Banggood don't have them and you'll you know, share the shipping. So it'll keep things, keep the price down because shipping is important. The shipping costs can soon add up. So as I say, we've got four of those for obvious reasons. You can't build a quadcopter with one motor. That's a unicopter and they don't fly very well. So there you go. Um, and someone will say, oh, but that's a helicopter. I don't care. I don't fly helicopters very much at all. So there you go. Four motors for a total of about 40 bucks. You're going to need some ESCs. And after looking around, I mean, these Afro ESCs, they're pretty cheap and they work pretty damn well. I mean, you know, there are better ESCs on the market, but this is our budget build. This is our budget build. And for the money, these are pretty damn good. They work reliably. I haven't had any sync issues with the latest version of the, the Simon K software that comes on them. And they're lightweight and, you know, can't go wrong. And of course, you can get these from Hobby King as well when you get your Naze 32 board. So again, save on the shipping. Um, what else are we going to need? I've got other stuff here. We need the frame, of course, and here we go. Uh, obviously, I've chosen the ZMR250 frame because it's, it's just cheap and you can get it in so many different places. Now, in this one, I've got the fiberglass frame. You might think, why didn't you get the carbon frame? Well, it's because this is a budget build. Um, you can opt for the carbon frame if you want to, and everything will be exactly the same. Follow these instructions, it'll be identical. The only difference will be that these will be made from carbon fiber instead of fiberglass. So you can spend twice as much money and get carbon fiber, or half as much money and get the fiberglass ones. We're going to use fiberglass. It's a little bit heavier. It's not going to worry you too much on your first mini quad build. You know, now this, this machine will be the thing that gets you into mini quads, and then you'll decide, hmm, I want something faster and lighter and more maneuverable. But you've got to start somewhere, and this is your low cost entry. So you'll get your frame. This frame came, this is the box the frame came in. I got this one from Banggood. I forget the price, but it's in the description. It was pretty damn cheap. Um, and they also sell the carbon frame. I'll put a link to that there. You can go on eBay, but you know, eBay, not so sure about the supplies. And of course, from Banggood, this includes free shipping. So that, again, keeps your prices down. Most important. You're going to need some propellers. And to be honest, the gem fan. Now, I've got five fours here, because that's what I've got. But don't be afraid. In fact, when you're learning, the five threes are probably a little bit easier to learn with, because that makes your throttle less sensitive. Now, you won't get the same performance out of the five threes, but you're not going to be looking for performance, you're just going to be looking to keep the damn thing in the air and avoid hitting things. So five threes or five fours, I'd go for five threes if I'm starting, but hey, get a mix. These are pretty cheap. You can get them from Hobby King, you can get them from Banggood. So um, whichever one you've got some spare, well, they're free shipping from Banggood, but they're a little bit cheaper from Hobby King. So if you've got some space left in your shipping allowance, you can get them from Hobby King. Uh, don't just get four. <laughs> get lots of sets because you will break them. You will, if you're not breaking them, you're not having fun, I'll tell you now. Um, you're going to need a board camera and this is the very famous and widely used HS, no what is it, the, the PZ0204, yeah, it's the 600 TV line Sony Superhead 2 camera anyway. Um, there's multiple sources for these, you can get them from, get them from Surveil Zone or from Security Camera 2000. Um, when they come they have a little uh, edge on them. I've got one up here which isn't actually the same but you'll see, oops, <clears throat> um, normally they have this extra edge around the edge here and you have to break that off with pliers because that board, that camera has to fit inside the board that comes in your frame, which if I can find it, is here. So that camera has to go through there. Obviously if you lift the outside edge on it, it would be too big, it wouldn't fit. So um, yeah, you just have to break the edge off. I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point in the build, not a problem. You are going to need an XT60 um, socket for plugging your battery into. Um, these are some of the little things now that people often don't realise. They think I've got the kit, I've got the motors, I've got the ESCs, oh I can go and build it. Well no you can't because you'll need one of these. In fact you can, if you're going to buy one, buy five because you'll find a use for the other ones. Um, Hobby King, sell those, links in the description. You're going to need some heat shrink because you're going to do some soldering I'm sorry or if you're in America you can do soldering, I don't care. Um, so you're going to expose yourself to dangerous levels of lead poisoning. It'll be fun, really. You'll have a different outlook on life when you finish soldering this baby up. But you'll need heat shrink of various sizes, and I'll tell you the sizes and how much you need in the description. Um, you're also going to need some Loctite. If you build this thing with that Loctite, it will fall apart, and you'll lose your motors and your screws, and you'll be really peed off because you'll get about five minutes flying, and everything will start coming apart. So you'll need some Loctite, blue Loctite. I got this from Hobby King. Plenty of places sell Loctite, but blue Loctite, it's the removable stuff. You don't use the red because you'll never get the screws out. And when you need to change a motor or something, you won't be able to. You have to throw the whole damn arm away. So, yep, Loctite. Make sure you got some of that. Now, some of the other stuff that they don't tell you you're going to need. Some standoffs. Now these are little nylon standoffs. These are the things that are going to mount your naseboard on the frame. You need to have these to mount your naseboard on the frame. Otherwise, 
are you going to do it? You know, you can't just bolt it straight down onto the frame because that'll put a lot of pressure on some of the bits underneath and it'll distort it and it'd be bad. So the length of these standoffs depends on your radio gear you're going to be using. So you'll see later on in the build video how different standoffs lengths will give you different sizes. These are M3 standoffs and they are nylon. So um, I'll put a link to where you can get these, all different sizes and shapes. Uh, of course, to go with those, you'll need some nylon screws, which screw into the top and some nylon nuts that go on the bottom. So again, all these things you have to buy. You didn't know you'd need those, did you? You just thought you'd buy a frame, you'd be away. No, nah, there's a lot, a lot of traps for young players in here, which is why I'm making this video. Now, these are other parts of the frame, which we don't have to worry about because they all come with it. Um, but what you're going to need is some cable ties. You'll need those to hold wires in place. You'll need them to put your antennas on the thing so they don't get caught up in the propellers. And you're gonna need some more standoffs. <laughs> Sorry, standoff time isn't over yet. Um, you need some two millimeter standoffs and what are you going to do with those well those are the things that are going to be used to mount your camera to that little frame i showed you and you'll see later on how that works so you need some and i got these off ebay these were cheap as beans i'm sure there's plenty of places to sell them um, i got a whole you get a whole range of different sizes which is great you i've actually used up all the good ones so i'll have to use some different sizes for this particular build but yeah get yourself some of these very useful they come with nuts and screws excellent great value on ebay um, so that is basically, oh yes, you'll need, if you can, get some of this stuff here. I don't know what it's called, croc strip or something, I don't know. So it's that stretchy stuff that you can use, and it's, it links to itself so you can use it around stuff, like a cable tie, but it's much kinder on the stuff that you're cabling together. So when you're holding your ESCs on, you can use that perhaps if you want to. Or you can get some bigger heat shrink like this, and I'll show you how that works. See, big heat shrink, that's much bigger. Um, this, you can use this to hold your heat shrinks onto, oh, sorry, your ESCs onto the arms and it makes a really nice, really neat job. So I'll give you the choice of how you do that. And you will also need some silicon wire, 12 or 14 gauge silicon wire. And that usually sold in one meter length. So just get a meter of each or if you get a, I think some prices offer a 500 millimeters of each color, uh, red and black. But you'll need that. Obviously you've got to solder stuff up. So yep, um, the, in the description there'll be links to this, but just where you buy probably depends on how much room you've got left in your freight allowance when you go to whatever place. There you go. Now 14 uh, gauge is fine for you know a beginner's quad like this. When you're getting into the racing and the high power stuff, yeah 12 or you know certainly 12 gauge is better, but in a small quad like this you know the extra weight's not warranted and it's a fairly short length of wire you're going to be using anyway so you're not going to lose much voltage through that so that's all the stuff that you are going to need right um essentials you might say of course you'll need some tools as well screwdrivers pliers normal stuff that you need to build stuff now i'm going to go through now the stuff that is not essential but it's nice okay here's the box of not essential but nice and first up this is a power distribution board now if you're going to be you know, if you're not a dab hand at soldering um, and you don't want to run wires everywhere, these things can save you a lot of time, but they do cost money. And we're trying to build budget here. So I'm simply mentioning this because if you really wanted to, you could go and buy one of these and use this instead of doing the wiring that I'm going to show you, especially if your soldering is not really up to scratch. This one is, I don't know who makes this one. What does it say? Um, yeah, anyway, it was sent to me and I'll be doing a closer look at it elsewhere it's got some wings on it so that must be important uh, must fly really well so there you go a power dist distribution board now I'm, I'm not necessarily going to put links to these things because there are so many of them and and i say they're not part of the really low cost build but there you go that'll save you time and effort now an esc you might think why you've already got four escs well i'll tell you what from experience escs sometimes you get some that are dud and sometimes you blow stuff up. So it's, if you're gonna buy four, buy five. Get an extra one, a spare, so that if you do blow up an ESC, you're not gonna be sitting around grizzling and moaning because I can't fly my mini quad because I've only got three working ESCs. You'll be able to fix it. Ooh, so, and again, it'll contribute. If you've got space in your, your shipping from Hobby King, you know, it won't cost you anything for the shipping if you buy it with the others. And the same goes for this, another motor. Now, remember these are budget motors. So it's always possible one of them's gonna be a bit dodgy and you may bend a shaft or break one, so get a spare while you're buying the other four. Get yourself a spare, that's lovely peace of mind. Uh, what else have I got in here? Oh yes, LED strips. Oh, now the ZMR frame doesn't have a built-in LED. The uh, power distribution board I just spoke about, and, and I can't believe it, I've lost it. Oh, where did I put that? Um, that power distribution board does have some LEDs on it. Most of them do, but um, the the option is you can get these Hobby King strips, self-adhesive backing. You can cut them at certain junctures along here. You can see there's a little cut mark here. And you can 
So you can cut it there and you have three LEDs, stick that underneath. I do that with all my ZMRs so that the, you have three LEDs at the front, three at the back under the frame. And if you're flying line of sight you know, in the evening, it makes a huge difference. And also it looks kind of cool. And this is cheap as beans. So one strip here, you can do multiple models you know, by cutting them off and just soldering the wires on. Really good idea. Um, another thing, if you are not using FreeSky, so you, or you don't have telemetry on a system, then what about one of these? What's this? This is one of the uber cheap OSDs. It's about nine bucks and it gives you two voltages. So you can have your battery voltage as displayed over your video and even your RSSI if your radio gear supports RSSI. Not really important with mini quads RSSI. You don't fly far enough away, but uh, certainly nice to have your battery voltage displayed on your goggles. So that means you'll be able to come in and land before you completely stuff your battery or run out of power and fall out of the sky. Brilliant, cheap telemetry, nine bucks. Um, and it comes with cables. Uh, finally, if you're building the ZMR, I mean, I've, I've bitched about this a few times before, right? Now, and some people say, oh, you're just moaning about nothing, but these arms, I mean, I've got collections of broken ones. Many people have broken these arms around here. And so, um, if you really want to go the extra distance, then there are, I've showed you before, there are the thug frame arms, which are uh, basically, they're not actually designed originally for the ZMR, they're for the thug frame. And these are super uber strong and you can use those instead of those. Um, probably get, don't buy these straight off. When you've broken a few of those, then you'll want to leap out and buy these. If you want to get some of these as a backup, because you will, if you're fl fly trying really hard, you will break those. And that's not the only place you can get the arms. If you want some arms that are actually really custom designed and made for the ZMR250 and a wide range of, when well, a range of thicknesses, then there's these. These are the, here you go. Um, the, what does it say? Cleland, Cleland, that's cleland-rc.uk. And these are also ZMR arms and he makes some really thick ones. The other benefits of these arms, which you probably can't really see, is a, a much bigger motor mounting pad here. Protects your motor when you come in and smack it into a tree or the ground because that size, that's just so much more area around the motor. And it's just nice, thick carbon fiber, really strong carbon fiber. I'm gonna be um, doing a, a little bit of a review on these later, but suffice to say, there are multiple places where you can get these much stronger arms, and I'll be putting link. I will put links to those in the description of this video because I think the arms are the weakest link on this quad frame. So there you go. That's that's the bill of materials. Now I was going to do this video in one whole long thing, but it was going to be about three quarters of an hour to an hour long, and I wouldn't submit anybody to watching my face for that long in a single sitting. Also, finding bits and pieces going backwards and forwards becomes a real pain in the backside. So it's going to be a three-parter, and this was part one. Part two, I'll be putting this together on the bench show, showing you how to wire things up and how to assemble stuff and little tips and tricks that I've picked up after building probably what half a dozen ZMRs now and so that'll be part two and then part three we'll do the um, setup that's basically calibrating the ESCs and setting up the naze board and just making sure that everything is working honky dory before we go out and give it a thrash and that includes setting up the camera because the camera has a lot of settings that we need to set up to make sure you're going to get a really good solid picture on your video glasses or even your lcd screen so there we go um, if you've got questions if you've got comments then please put them in the space below this video kindly provided by the people at youtube and in the meantime um, i shall now get back to the bench See you soon. Oh, by the way, forgot, oh, almost forgot. If you don't usually watch this channel, then you better subscribe so you're advised when the next part of this build comes out. So just click the subscribe. And then when you go to your YouTube page, I'll be there again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you soon. Back to the bench.